It's time to ask the age old question, can I trust my friends? Hi, my name is Brittany from Brittany Lives Reading and a few months ago we started to ask, can we trust our friends? The first one, they all asked about me. And we read three of our friends' favorite books to see if we can trust them. In this video, I am asking, can I trust Nicole from Dusty Book Sniffers? Now I will say, Nicole and I do not necessarily have the same reading taste. We align in some things, but Nicole reads a lot more literary fiction than I do. And at least one of the books in this stack would fall into that genre. So I'm definitely going to be stepping out of my comfort zone a little bit throughout this vlog. But I do love Nicole and if you don't know who Nicole is, you definitely need to go check out Nicole from Dusty Book Sniffers because Nicole does amazing stuff over on their channel. Lots of great vlogs, lots of great community read-alongs, lots of sprints. If you love those things, you will love Nicole's channel. And honestly, Nicole is just a great person and I cannot say enough about Nicole. But do I agree on these books? we're gonna find out. So what I'm going to do is read the group book and also two books specifically picked for me. One of those books is Wolf Gone Wild. I also have the group book which is Bandit Queens which I am not going to read first because I'm going to actually be buddy reading this with Leandra in a couple of days. So the first book I'm going to start with is actually the one that got on Timmy's TBR for this vlog project and that is Elevator Pitch by Linwood Barkley. This is a thriller, which is not really outside my comfort zone, but I have not been in my thriller era for six months to a year. It has been a while since I've enjoyed thrillers or read any amount of them. So this could go well because I have liked thrillers in the past. And this one does sound very fast paced and interesting, but you know, I'm a little nervous just because it is not something that I'm currently reading a lot of. I do know the general synopsis of this, of it basically being an elevator that people get in and then it plummets to like the floor and they all die. And then it keeps happening in buildings all over the city every day. So people aren't sure if it's like a serial killer or what's happening, but that's really all I know about it. So I'm gonna get started reading this and I will chat with you once I've read a little bit more and can actually tell you more about it than that. But it sounds very stressful to think of an elevator plummeting to the floor. And Nicole has told me that it is very atmospheric and intense. So I'm kind of thinking that this will capture my attention if that is exactly what I'm getting. slightly told a little bit of a fib. I didn't know that I was when I talked to you last, but I did not start Elevator Pitch. Right before I was about to start that book, Leandra messaged me saying that she was ready to start our buddy read of Bandit Queens. So I actually jumped right into that because I hadn't started the other book and that just made sense because we were both ready to start a new book. So I have finished 10 chapters of the Bandit Queens and honestly going into this, can I trust Nicole video series. This was the book I was most worried about. This was the book that is the most outside my comfort zone from just sheer genre and also from the synopsis. This is definitely a contemporary literary fiction book and that's not something I read a lot of and it's not something I typically enjoy so I was not sure about this book. I am 106 pages in, I'm 10 chapters in, and I'm really enjoying it and I'm so surprised at how much I'm enjoying this book. This book is very similar in style to a book that I already know that I love. I did not realize they were similar, but they are. And that is the Finley Donovan series, which currently I can't review those books because they are under the St. Martin's Press boycott, but this book isn't and it's giving me those vibes. So it's even more of a reason to pick this up if you like that and want to continue to support the boycott. Check out this one, check it out. Our main character is Finley and has a friend that's very similar to Vero. In this book, we follow Gita and Gita's husband disappeared. Her husband left her. She lives in India. Keep that in mind. That is a big part of this book because she does live in a caste society and that does play a role in 
Gita having to overcome some things from her husband leaving her. In this society, women can be outcast if their husbands leave them or even if their husbands die. So that is where we kind of find Gita at kind of the bottom of her social circle. Her husband, again, has left, but people actually think she killed him. And she has never corrected anyone about this. She has just kind of let that rumor go on because she thinks that might be a better rumor than him having left her. From what I can tell, he was abusive to her. And that is a big part of this book as well, that there is some domestic violence going on. So please enter this book cognizant of what the kind of triggers and things are in this book. So people think she did kill her husband. She didn't. She doesn't even know where he went. He's just not around. We don't know. But people think she killed him. And all the women in her social circle definitely treat her kind of less than because she is not married. She does not have children. All these things make everyone kind of look down on her. Again, classist society and also a caste system. One of the women in her social circle, though, Farah, comes to her and says, my husband is also abusive to me and to my children. Help me kill him. Gita does not have it in her heart to tell her that she's never done something like this before and decides to help Farah out. So the two of them kind of bumble about trying to figure out a way to accomplish just that. This is got a lot of humor in it. Again, it does have a lot of very serious topics happening in this book as well, but they do have a side of humor and satire that does lift up the book a little bit because it would be very heavy without it. We also have a lot of great commentary in this book. This is an innately feminist book. It is extremely feminism looking at the place of women in all societies, not just this Indian one, but in general, but also in a caste system such as this. One thing I love about this, which sometimes feminist books don't look and kind of look into the allyship of some men, and this book really does that. We have Kareem in this book. Kareem is someone who lives locally to Gita. He is a widower and has three children, and he is definitely an ally to the women's rights movement. And we love Kareem. We love Kareem. I love that there is an ally in this book. And I love that there's a place for it in this book. And it was one of the things that really caught my attention in this book. I love a feminist book. I love a feminist commentary. So that definitely is endearing this book to me. But I'm also finding the classism and the caste system commentary very interesting as well. Gita is not a perfect character. She's not perfect. She does things. She says mean things to people around her. She is not always, you know, the character that you think is the most upstanding. However, I think there are times where she maybe lashes out at people because they have looked down on her for so long. And she's just so tired of being at the bottom of this system. And she just is trying to start her own business and trying to better her life. And people keep looking down on her and not giving her the credit she deserves. And she sometimes will say somewhat awful things to people, but out of a place of hurt and a place of being squashed down for so long. In a society where it is considered the woman's really job to be a wife and a mother, when you are not a mother or a wife, what does that look like when you don't want to be a wife or a mother? What does that look like? I cannot wait to continue this book, but I am going to wait for Leandra to catch up to me. Leandra's not quite where I'm at. So I'm going to put this down tonight and actually start Elevator Pitch because I haven't done that yet. So you're going to kind of see me dual vlog these two books just because I'm buddy reading this one. And we're in no rush to get it done over the next week. We'll probably dip in and out over the next few days as we both have time to catch up to each other. And we have other books to read for this project. So we're just going to kind of see where we get with both books. So tonight I'm going to start Elevator Pitch. I've already read the first chapter, but that doesn't really give me much information. So I will talk to you more about that probably tomorrow.
today and I want to update you on elevator pitch. I am already 164 pages through this book. It reads very quickly, it's very fast paced, and we follow a lot of different characters. And at this point, I don't really know how they're all gonna connect together. So we start off on Monday in New York. Four people enter an elevator and we do get their points of view or at least one of them while we're on the elevator. The elevator goes up to the floor that it's supposed to go on, doesn't open and continues to go up and up and up. Everyone is wondering why the elevator didn't stop where it was supposed to. It then starts to go back down and they're like, okay, well, whatever happened must have just been a glitch. We're now going back down. We're going to stop at the right floors. And then all of a sudden it plummets to the bottom and obviously all the people on the elevator do not survive this plummet. We follow the New York City mayor because obviously he's pulled in to come to this disaster because they think it is a disaster, a horrible accident, something horrible has happened. We follow a newspaper writer, Barbara, who is following the mayor and kind of writes stories about the mayor but then follows the mayor to this tragedy. And then we also follow a detective who is not working on this case right now. I have a feeling at some point this all connects together because, you know, it's a book. But we follow this detective as he is called into a homicide of a man who is found on the High Line and is missing fingertips. Needless to say, there are moments in this book where it is quite gruesome. Between the elevator and the people dying on the elevator and other things happening, there are definitely some gruesome scenes in this book. Keep that in mind. I don't mind that, but it is something to be aware of. We do this by days of the week. So there's Monday. I am now in the middle of Tuesday. Tuesday morning, another elevator crashes. At first, everyone is still thinking this is an accident. The mayor comes. Everybody kind of flocks. What is going on? Why all of a sudden are these elevators not working? Like, is the city letting people down and not inspecting elevators correctly? What is happening? Why are all of a sudden there's these ton of elevator accidents? However, there might be more to the story. And obviously now people are starting to suspect that maybe there's something sinister going on. Is it a serial killer? Is it an act of terrorism? What is going on? And at this point, I don't know who's responsible for these elevator crashes. I've only seen two of them. I have a suspicion there might be more coming. There are definitely more days in this book. And I think even from the synopsis, I can tell that more than two elevators crash. At this point, I've only seen two. But the synopsis leads me to believe that there will be more. And when we're in those elevator scenes, because we are seeing the elevator crash from the point of view of one of the people on the elevator, one of our victims... It is very suspenseful. It is very like you're just kind of holding your breath because you know you're on an elevator. You know what the synopsis of this book is. You're like, what is going to happen? You know this outcome's going to be bad. You just know it. So you're just watching it and you're like tensed up. It's kind of like watching like a horror movie and you know that music starts, that sinister music and you know something's going to happen. That's what the elevator scenes are like. But the rest of the book, because we're following so many different people and I still don't know how they're all going to connect together. That part is actually quite kind of laid back pacing a little bit, which is really interesting because you have these moments of really suspenseful moments and then followed by kind of laid back following our main characters. And then you have a new day and another suspenseful moment and then laid back following the characters. So the pacing of this book is not bad. I'm not mad at the pacing. I actually kind of like it but it's definitely different than what I was expecting from the synopsis because you do have these moments of like really crazy things happening and then you kind of back off a little bit and have a moment to breathe and then you jump back in. Anyway, that's my thoughts on the first 164 pages of Elevator Pitch. I am now going to switch back to Bandit Queens. I don't normally vlog this way, but maybe you'll love it. Maybe you'll like bouncing around between book and book. Because Leandra is ready to move on. Leandra caught up to me and we are ready to move on with that one. I'm enjoying both of these books, so I'm kind of enjoying bouncing back and forth between these stories. They're very different stories and I'm liking them both. Nicole, so far, haven't finished any of them yet, so we'll see. Nicole's doing a great job, though. One thing I'm also going to be doing today is I started to kit up a diamond painting that I want to work on. I started diamond painting a little while ago, then got into squares instead of rounds and abandoned the hobby. 
So I'm going to go back to rounds and rekindle my love for diamond painting. Diamond painting is something that Nicole does often. So I wanted to get some crafting into this Can I Trust Nicole vlog because Nicole has a whole crafting channel and does so much crafting, but I am not crafty. But diamond painting I can do and diamond painting is something Nicole does a lot. So you're gonna see me kind of work through that diamond painting through this vlog as well. I kitted it up this morning and I'm excited to dive in and maybe listen to some of my audiobook while I diamond paint. been a few days since I have talked to you. I have not done as much reading this month as I typically do. It's quite late in the month but we're gonna get these books done. I have finished The Bandit Queens though and I ended up giving this 3.5 stars. There were a lot of things I liked about this and I talked about that in my last update. I really did enjoy the kind of satire of the book, the style of the book, I really liked what the book was trying to say around feminism, around motherhood, around feminism in a caste society because that is very different the way women are viewed in this Indian caste society and feminism within that. That was all something that I really enjoyed. What kind of took away from it for me were a couple of things and how we got to our 3.5 star rating. So there were a lot of times when our female characters were talking to each other that the dialogue was kind of hard to get through. Just the way the dialogue was written and also these women do not necessarily stand together all the time. They do have moments where they're like we should be working together and standing up for each other and protecting each other but that's not the whole book. It's not always there. So that definitely was a little bit detracting from what I think the book was trying to do and also just those moments where we would have that back and forth dialogue was not my favorite. Also this book became kind of repetitive at times. This book is women trying to murder these awful men and there's only so many times we can plan murders differently. And it became kind of repetitive near the end of this story. Also, I do apologize if I'm a little dewy today. It's like 96% humidity outside. So just everything is sticky. I'm ready for fall already. Can someone bring me my pumpkin spice lattes and can it be fall? Because I'm like, I'm over it already. Anyway. This book was good for a lot of things and there were a couple things I didn't like so we got to our 3.5 star. However, if you would have said I was going to give this book 3.5 stars at the beginning, I would have scoffed at you. I did not anticipate me to enjoy this book as much as I did because it is so far outside my normal genre. So even though it didn't get like, you know, a four or a five star rating, I still think this was a win. And I definitely think that if you really enjoy this genre of literature, you can trust Nicole because this was actually a solid one even for me and it's super outside my comfort zone. So, so far I think we can trust Nicole on this book because I think a 3.5 in this genre is actually a pretty high rating for me. So I'm going to dive back into Elevator Pitch and I will chat with you when I either get further through that book or I finish it depending on what I have to tell you. I feel like it's one of those ones that I might just update you when I finish. I know I already did an update, so you've already kind of gotten one already, but I think I might hold off till I finish now because with it being a thriller, there's only so much I can say without like spoiling the thriller. So you may not see me until I finish Elevator Pitch, but that's what I'm gonna go read right now. So I have finished Elevator Pitch and I rewatched my original thoughts because those were taken a few days ago. I had a bit of a gap between starting this and finishing this, obviously because I finished the entirety of Bandit Queens, but I was also doing Timmy's TV Arthon at the same time. So there was a gap in time. And I kind of feel like some of the things that I liked at the beginning of the book are actually the things I didn't like as the book went on. I did talk about the pacing at the start of my last update and it was how we have these intense moments 
and then we slow down. And I think that worked at the beginning, but as that continued to be the case, and we had more days that played out the same way, and the days were longer in the lighter half of the book than they were in the first, it became a pacing issue. This never really felt as thrilling as I needed it to be, except in those very first few chapters of every day. And because I knew that was what was happening, because it kept happening every single day the exact same way, it lost the thrillingness of it. Now, some days do go differently, and the end certainly does. There's a lot happening at the end of this book. But there was enough of it that was kind of the same system over and over that it did lose that thrilling aspect and it did have a pacing issue. It really did. The pacing was off in this book. I also think this was just too long. It's 450 pages and a thriller, I don't think, if you want to keep that thrilling going, you can't do it in 450 pages. And again, that leans to the pacing issue. We follow a lot of side characters in this book. We follow a lot as their perspectives. Well, not from their perspective. It's not first person, but you know what I mean. We jump from one person to the next and the next chapter to the next and the next chapter. And I'm not convinced all of them are needed. I'm actually fairly convinced they're not all needed. So again, we could have edited this down and made it significantly tighter. And I would have liked it a lot more. So for this one, I'm going to give it a three star. It was just a middle of the road thriller for me, but I think it could have been great. I think the idea was great had those things just been a little bit changed in the book. But that is the end of this book. And I think it's time to jump in to our last read for this Can I Trust Nicole vlog. And that is Wolf Gone Wild. This, I don't exactly know what this is. I don't know if it's a cozy fantasy. I don't know if there's a romance aspect. I honestly don't know. So I am going to just leave us here. I'm gonna go read some of it and then I'll come back and kind of tell you more about what it is. finished filming Timmy's. So I thought while the camera was set up, while I looked half decent, why not give you an update on Wolf Gone Wild? Yesterday, I read 55% of this book and I am currently at that point in the book. This book has been a journey for me. It has been a journey, the 55%. It is technically, I would say, a contemporary romance with a side of fantasy by the fact that our main characters are a witch and a werewolf. But in general, it is a contemporary romance novel which is much better than anything that I thought it might be for me because I do love a good contemporary romance. However, when I started this book, I almost DNF'd it. And there's a couple reasons for that, but I wanted to give it a solid try and I kept going and now I'm actually quite invested. So we went from a DNF very early on to pushing through and I'm glad that I did. So in this book, we follow... At this point, you will see me realize I cannot remember our main characters' names. You will see me look up the main characters' names, and not accurately, and name the main female protagonist as her sister Jules. Her name is Evie. I will continue to call her Jules for the rest of this update, but we'll fix that in future updates. So in this book, we follow Jules and Mateo. Mateo is a werewolf, and he is under a hex that makes it impossible for him to morph into his wolfy form. Because he isn't able to transition into being a wolf, he hasn't done it in some time. And now his wolf counterpart is kind of pushing into his regular day-to-day -day life and he's losing control. His wolf is called Alpha. And in the start of this book, we meet Mateo and he's kind of having an internal dialogue with himself, Mateo and Alpha. And Alpha is something else. The way Alpha talked just did not work for me. This back and forth with Mateo and Alpha, I wasn't too sure about it. It felt very cringy to me, which was why I was going to DNF. But I'm glad that I did push through. So Mateo decides to go to these sisters who kind of run New Orleans. They are kind of the coven in charge of New Orleans. It's a set of sisters. I'm assuming in this series, because it is a series, we follow each sister. The one we follow in this book is Jules, and she is a hexbreaker. Each sister has a different type of magic, and that is her magic. Therefore, 
Mateo is going to her to break this hex. And they're trying to figure out what kind of hex it is, who put it on him so that they can break it at the start of this book. There's instantly some sexual chemistry between Jules and Mateo and also Alpha. And again, this is the part that I don't like about this book is Alpha's kind of running commentary inside Mateo's head because it is aggressive because he is the Alpha Wolf. So I guess it makes sense. And I don't mind aggressive in some ways, but in this way, I'm not necessarily a fan of it at times. I like Mateo, don't like that part, the Alpha part. They start hanging out together though because when Mateo is around Jules, her hex magic kind of tames Alpha and makes him less prominent in Mateo's mind. So later throughout the book, you get less of Alpha or at least at the point that I'm at. So that was why I started to like the book because I do like Jules and Mateo. They are not together yet. They are still working on breaking a curse, but there is a lot of flirting happening and I don't mind it. I don't mind it. So I'm intrigued in how this kind of ends up. I'm enjoying the romance for what it is. I could do without the wolfy side comments. But at least it's endeared itself to me enough so that I can finish out this book. And I actually think it might end up being one of my favorites from this video just from the fact that it's more in my comfort zone. It will really depend on how much wolfiness is in this and how much we see Alpha. I'm hoping that once they break the curse, he regains control of Alpha and we don't see him much at all. That would really be best. We'll see how it kind of goes about near the end of this book. I only have 45% left of this, so I should be able to finish this today. I have Patreon sprints. It is Monday. That is when I always do my Patreon sprints. So I will be focusing on this on those anyway to finish up this vlog so that I can finish editing it because it goes out on Sunday and it's now Monday and I'm still reading. So we need to finish this book so that we can get to the conclusion of whether I can trust Nicole. So I finished Wolf Gone Wild and I gave this four stars. It was a cute contemporary romance with a witchy werewolf vibe. Everything I said in the last update, I still agree with. The alpha part of our main male character is never fully gone, but definitely takes a back seat after about the 30% mark of this book. So if you can get past that, I think this book is not too bad. Like I kind of liked it. Evie and Mateo are cute together. I like seeing this like witchy world of New Orleans and the sisters. I like that we're going to follow some of the other sisters in the other books because I think the sisters and their relationship was really interesting and also the magic that each of them have really brings something to this book. The magic is not in depth. Don't get me wrong. It's very light. This is a contemporary romance with a very small fantasy element, but it is still there and it does bring a little bit something special to the book. In this first book, we definitely see what some of these relationships coming up will be. I think I can kind of guess who some of our couples are and I definitely will be continuing the series. So Nicole, great pick for me. Thank you. But that is the end of this Can I Trust Nicole vlog and I think we had pretty good results. I like Bandit Queens enough. It was outside my comfort zone so it wasn't like a shining star but I enjoyed my time with it and I'm glad I read it. Elevator Pitch was so so and Wolf Gone Wild did pretty well. Now I am not the only person who has done this vlog. A bunch of us have. So I have everyone linked down below and a playlist for these vlogs. So go down there and check out everybody else's as they read different books that Nicole recommended for them. Thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!